I'm Artist Wodehouse and I uniquely am surrounded by four of my smallest reed organs in preparation for a recording project tomorrow. And since that was the case, I decided to make a video where I could compare and contrast them one after the other and share it with a YouTube audience. I've done other videos using these instruments before uh, in separate videos. I've played several on this, several on this, not any on that yet, and certainly many on this one, Mason and Hamlin, but never have you seen them all together, and it's really wonderful to hear the differences and look at what makes them different. Now, just in case some of you don't know uh, how a reed organ works, uh, a reed organ has these little metal reeds, brass reeds, inside, one for each note, and what happens is that there's a bellows underneath, and what you do is you pump up the bellows, it's a lot like a vacuum cleaner, and when you press a note and pump, there's a little channel that opens up to have air pull through the reed, and it sounds just like a harmonica, as I said. Now this instrument that I'm going to start with was the first instrument and I found, and I found it, this was the first reed organ I ever found, and I found it in a dumpster. And it is made by Mason and Hamlin Company out of Boston, and it was made in 1889. It's a very simple instrument, very easy to carry two people, or even one person. And it was probably intended either for a small church or for a home instrument, for playing hymns and simple tunes. Now this instrument has 49 notes only, and it has a, what's typical on most of these. It has a swell shape that you can use your knee to operate. What the swell shape does is behind the reeds is a long wooden shingle, and when you press this, it opens up, and the reeds sound louder. So this is a way to control dynamics, making loud and soft. So it's a very simple instrument. And at the same time, it's quite beautiful because it has reeds that are made by Mason and Hamlin, and that was what they were noted for, creating these types of metal reeds that had a mellow, rich sound. And so this, this little baby can sound just as beautiful as you can imagine. that's the next youngest, this was 80, 1889, this one here, it has a wonderful decal on it, it says world famous folding organ made by Billhorn Brothers. And you see all these medals that these, this instrument won in many world spares. Now this, this, uh, this reed organ is what you call a folding organ or a preacher's organ or a chaplain's organ. But it was invented by Peter Billhorn, who founded this company along with his brother. Now, Peter Billhorn was a famous evangelist preacher. And he would go from tent revival to tent revival right around 1900. And it's to civic places that didn't have an installed organ. And this was a very convenient little invention because you could fold it up into the size of a suitcase and just carry it with you. But you would say, well, this is a really tiny instrument. How could it be heard in these, these environments that, that are very large or not acoustically set up? Well, that was the whole point about Billhorn. They made these instruments so they would be loud, but still have a certain sweetness and resonance. And it, this could be used to lead hymns. Again, you have a 49 note range, you have a swell shape, that's it. This is a very simple instrument.
medication would come in. And... Now, here's another uh, polling organ that I have. It's later. It's approximately from 1940. And this was a military organ. You can even see from the color, uh, it's very military. A very utilitarian instrument. You can carry it just like the billhorn has this metal. Well, this is padded, so it's a little easier to carry, but this one's much heavier. And the reason it is much heavier is because it doesn't have 49 notes, it has 61 notes. You know, almost 20 more notes than the other one. And uh, it also has, in addition to the swell shade that they all had, uh, it also has a second set of reeds. And that would be a note with sound, and the second set would sound an octave higher. So it was a much fuller, more, a much louder sound. And that was tripped by a knee lever right here on the left. That was the swell. This is the, the this triggers the uh, secondary set of reeds. So you can have the difference between a louder and a softer sound. Now this instrument, uh, tonally, you notice the bill horn is very boisterous, but sweet, but really pungent. This one's quite quiet, and I'm I'm sort of mystified about it because you couldn't really lead hymn singings from this from this this instrument in a large setting. It would have to be in a very small, more intimate setting. It could be at a memorial service, it could be just as background music in a service, but that said, it has a, a very sweet, melancholy tone. And I'll show you how it sounds both with and without the, uh, the secondary set of reeds. I'll start with, uh, with it, just the, the simple set of reeds, and then I'll add the additional on the the repetition of the melody. notes. We don't really know who made it, but it was probably made by a company named White that came out of Chicago. This is a Japanese instrument. It was made by Yamaha. And that would surprise a lot of people because people associate Yamaha with acoustic and digital pianos and a variety of electronic uh, musical instruments. But Yamaha began as a reed organ manufacturer right around 1900. And what uh, they, they decided to do that was because it was a way to introduce Japanese students to playing on a keyboard with a cheaper instrument and also a way of acquainting people with Western tunings and Western music in a simplified way. They were used, there were bigger Yamahas that were used in church, uh, Christian churches in the Far East, but primarily it was an educational tool. But, this instrument is really valuable because, musically, uh, in, in terms of how it relates to the rest of them, because it's quite a, it speaks very quickly. In other words, the notes turn on right away. You notice how sometimes the notes take a while to come on. This one, boom, the note is on. Also, it's really easy to manipulate it to play loud and soft. It's very sensitive. That said, however, the tone of the instrument is very nasal and very abrupt. It doesn't have much resonance like the rest of them do. So it has its usage for certain kinds of music. It's very good for contrapuntal music where there's a lot of need for clarity and precision in the, the attack on the note. Like Bach. <laughs> 